Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. The 60-day deadline in the War Powers Act has come and gone, meaning President Obama is required to seek congressional approval for ongoing military action in Libya. Although on Friday, the president wrote a letter to congressional leaders saying he has no intention of doing that, arguing that the U.S. military's roles in Libya is limited to just supporting NATO. President Obama said approval from Congress is not necessary. Of course, Obama is the fifth straight president to begin a war with no formal authorization from Congress. The last president not to have an unconstitutional war during his administration was Jimmy Carter. And given that the House is on the verge of passing a Defense Authorization Act with a provision that gives the president war powers until every single terrorist on earth is dead, we can expect more of these limited and unapproved wars in the future. With congressional Republicans threatening to screw over America by not raising the debt ceiling, a new report from the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities confirmed that the leading cause of our debt problems in America is the tax cuts. It's the tax cuts, stupid. If the Bush tax cuts are extended, then by 2019 they will be the single largest contributor to our nation's debt, far outweighing the cost of the recession and emergency measures like the stimulus package to fight the recession combined. Over half of our total national debt is thanks to Bush policies of unpaid for tax cuts and unpaid for foreign wars, although these are two policies that have been extended and even ramped up by Congress during President Obama's tenure. But if our lawmakers are really serious about confronting debt, then then the answer couldn't be any clearer. Go back to appropriate tax rates for millionaires and billionaires and bring our troops home. In the best of the rest of the news, more freak weather in the Midwest Yesterday, a massive tornado gashed across southwest Missouri, leveling the city of Joplin to a pile of rubble. Currently, the death toll stands at 89 people, but authorities are worried that's likely to rise today. In just the last month, we've seen historic flooding events and historic tornado outbreaks ruin the lives of countless Americans in the Midwest. Sadly, this could just be the beginning of permanent chaotic weather as the result of global warming. AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka had some tough words for Democrats on Friday. At a press conference, Trumka said, We will spend the summer holding elected officials in Congress, as well as the states, accountable on one measure. Are they improving or degrading life for working families? Trumka is the president of the largest labor union in the nation with over 11 million members. He showed just how influential his union could be last year when it withdrew its support for Arkansas Democratic Senator Blanche Lincoln, causing her to lose re-election. Since then, Republican state lawmakers around the nation have initiated a war on labor with startlingly effective results. Although a backlash is now underway in Wisconsin and Ohio that could leave many Republicans looking for new jobs. But Trumpka doesn't think Democratic politicians are doing enough to fight back. It doesn't matter, he said, if candidates and parties are controlling the wrecking ball or simply standing aside. The outcome is the same either way. Working people make up the majority of the electorate in America, so not only is helping the working class the right thing to do, it's also smart politically. It's time to end the war that Reagan declared on working people 30 years ago. As relations with Pakistan tense up, a new WikiLeaks cable reveals that the Bush administration dropped the ball back in 2007. That's when a progressive reformer who had the hearts and minds of the people, Benazir Bhutto, appealed to the U.S. State Department for protection as she was running to become Pakistan's prime minister. Days after a suicide attack in October of 2007 that narrowly missed her but killed 140 of her supporters, Budo met with the U.S. ambassador to Pakistan requesting more security. She was denied. Ron Suskind's book, The Way of the World, written back in 2008, alleges it was a decision by Dick Cheney to deny Budo security. Two months later, she was killed, and our best chance to stop extremism in Pakistan was lost. The Rupert Murdoch-owned British newspaper News of the World is facing even more allegations of spying today after some journalists of the newspaper were thrown in jail and lawsuits are raining down from celebrities and politicians over a phone tapping scandal. News of the World is now being sued by rival newspapers who allege that Murdoch's executives intercepted voicemails and even hacked into other newspapers' computers to steal stories. So News Corp, which owns Fox News, has now openly been charged in the U.K. for illegally spying on politicians and stealing stories from their news rivals. I can only imagine what they're up to here in the States. Rupert? Sean? Hello? Is this thing on? Saturday passed and the rapture did not come. 
Harold Camping, the man who predicted the rapture and encouraged thousands around the world to uproot their lives and prepare to ascend to heaven, told reporters he was flabbergasted. In lieu of rapture, there are now countless people around the planet who are trying to figure out what to do with their lives. These people who gave their life savings to Camping's church, quit their jobs, sold their homes and cars, basically got rid of everything in preparation for Judgment Day. Of course, that should make an interesting next job interview. Why'd you quit your previous job? Well, I thought the world was going to end. I have a feeling these people could be unemployed for a while. Crazy alert, armed and hungry, this weekend exotic weaponry was a theme at two different fast food restaurants in America. In Kentucky, a woman threatened employees at a pizza hut with a sword, and in Arizona, another woman threatened workers at a Dairy Queen with a slightly more modern piece of weaponry, a grenade. Let's hope managers at McDonald's and Burger King are taking notice. Is there something about fast food that provokes violence? Will the next person demanding a Big Mac be carrying a bazooka? And that's the way it is today, Monday, May 23rd, 2011. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.